Hello everyone, I'm Ivan from Vlazen Tech, and today I'll be giving you a quick start guide for the Microfiber 5 Pro. Now, this guide is not a replacement for the instruction manual. You should still absolutely read the instruction manual before using the device, as it has a lot more information in there, which we won't have time to cover in this short video. For your reference, the instruction manual can be accessed by scanning the QR code on the inside of the box, uh, or on the actual back of the Microfiber which also includes a QR code. Now, depending on which version of the microfiber you purchased, you'll either be getting it in a box like this or a carry case such as this one here. Today, we're only gonna be using the basic items, so we're only gonna focus on the starter kit that comes in the box here. When you open up the box, you'll notice the microfiber unit itself, the fluid tank for the microfiber, the plastic safety cap that goes over the fluid tank when it's installed on the device and mounts magnetically like this. A bottle of fog liquid, the charging cable, a Q-tip, and the remote control. So let's get started. The first thing we recommend you do when you get your microfiber is charge it up. That's pretty easy. Just use the included uh, USB-C cable to charge the microfiber. Uh, you can use any power adapter, any USB power adapter. When the microfiber is getting power and it's charging, you'll notice that the little light, the status light, is going to turn orange. When the microfiber is fully charged, it will turn off. Most of the time, the microfibers do come with enough power to get started with using them. This one's already charged up, so we'll continue on to the next step. Before turning on your microfiber, we'll have to fill the fluid tank. To make it easier to fill the fluid tank, I'm going to install it onto the base unit, and that can be done by just screwing it in, like so. This shouldn't require any excess force, so it should be quite easy to do with your fingers, but do make sure that it's nice and tight so that it makes a good connection for later on. To fill the fluid tank, simply take off the rubber stopper on the front cap, uh, make sure not to lose it, it is quite small. Then take the fog liquid bottle and just gently squeeze it and fill up the microfiber until the uh, liquid level is near the top. You don't want to overfill it as that could cause it to spill, uh, but you do want to get it to the point where it's nearly full. You don't want to overpress the bottle, you don't want to press the bottle too hard either as the tip can potentially come off. Uh, so just take it nice and easy and fill it up until it's nearly full. Once you're done with that, replace the rubber stopper and just make sure that it's fully in place there. Then take the safety cap and put it over the microfiber. Before using the microfiber for the first time after you filled up the fog liquid tank, we do always recommend waiting about 10 to 15 minutes just to make sure that the liquid can seep into that brand new heating coil. So let's get started with actually using the device. To turn it on, you'll notice that there is a little toggle switch on the bottom. Go ahead and push it to the right and the status light now turns green and the screen comes to life. The screen interface is quite simple and includes a few different elements. So on the right hand side is the power level for the coil. So that dictates how powerful, how dense the smoke is. Uh, on the left hand side is the fan power level, the pump power level, and that just changes the airspeed of the smoke coming out. Uh, we usually recommend keeping that at full uh, unless you know exactly what you're doing. And right in the middle is the thermometer. Uh, so that's the temperature indicator, and that'll show you how hot the fluid tank of the microfiber is. When the microfiber is cold, you will notice that the top two power bars on the heating coil, so the smoke density, are grayed out. This is a feature that we've implemented to make sure that you aren't overstressing the coil while it's still cold. So it'll limit the amount of power the microfiber can uh, have when it's running on a cold tank. As the temperature increases, you will notice that two, those two bars will become filled in and you'll be able to access the full smoke density. Now, this is a feature you can turn off if you prefer in the advanced settings menu, and we do recommend consulting our advanced menu settings guide for the Microfiber 5 Pro to do that. 
Of course, about above those bars is the battery indicator. And finally, at the top is going to be an area for any errors to display if they do happen. So let's try it out. When you press the main button on the microfiber, it'll start producing smoke. You will notice that there is pretty much no heat up time, so the moment you press the button, it'll be ready to go. If you want to switch, uh, if you want to adjust the power levels, it's also quite easy. So the select button will switch between the different power levels. Uh, so if you want to go from one bar to two bars, to three bars, and so on, up to a maximum of eight, that's what the select button is for. If you want to switch between adjusting the smoke density and the smoke speed, just press the mode button and you'll see that the power levels switch from being selected to unselected. So once again, press mode to switch between the speed and the density and press select to adjust that individual setting. Now for best practices of using microfiber, we do always recommend keeping it upright. The reason for this is because the heating coil absorbs liquid from the bottom of the fluid tank. That means if you're going to be using it upside down, it won't be able to absorb any liquid. If you want to use it sideways, you can usually do that as well, but we do always recommend that you have at least a half to three quarters of the fluid tank just to make sure that it can once again absorb it. Um, when you're using the microfiber in the upright position, do always uh, take a look at the fluid level. If the fluid level is uh, getting low, always refill it. You never want to run the microfiber without any liquid in the fluid tank, as that will cause the heating coil to burn out. If you're using your microfiber and you ever notice that there's any droplets coming out of the nozzle instead of uh, smoke, then that means that there's a little bit too much fog liquid accumulated in the heating coil chamber uh, just in the middle there. Uh, so that's quite an easy fix. Take your Q-tip uh, and just gently insert it into the barrel of the microfiber and then spin it clockwise and allow it to bottom out. Allow it to absorb that liquid and then just spin it in the other direction to pull it out. Uh, repeat it once or twice, uh, depending on how much liquid is in there, and the microfiber should be good to go again and shouldn't spit. The only reason the microfiber may be spitting is if you have a missing fluid tank uh, fill port, as that will allow the liquid to seep back into the heating coil, or it can happen also right after you've filled up the fluid tank. Generally, if you've had the microfiber in long storage or you've filled up the fluid tank, we do usually recommend just doing the Q-tip procedure uh, before using the microfiber, as that'll ensure that you're getting a nice clean stream of smoke. Finally, let's talk about storing the microfiber. So whenever you're done with using the device, always remember to take off the fluid tank and store it separately. On the device itself, if you've had it in the on position, remember to turn it off. If you're gonna be using it for, not using it for anything longer than a few hours, we always recommend turning it off anyway, as leaving it on for extended periods of time, say for a few days, could cause the battery to over discharge and cause battery related issues. You will notice that the Microfogger 5 Pro Ultimate Kit does come with a spare battery included, and that can be used if you want to extend the runtime over the course of a day. Uh, and to swap it out, it's actually quite simple. Just grab hold of the battery bay door on the rear of the device and rotate it anti-clockwise. Once you've rotated in, uh, and you may have to push in a little bit as well, the battery bay door will come out, and then you'll be able to extract the battery. Generally, it may take a few taps to get the battery to come out of the device, and then you'll be able to grab a hold of it just like this and take it out. These batteries should only be stored in the safety cases, in the small plastic safety cases that we provide with them. You should never leave a battery just standing around on its own, as that could cause a potential short circuit. Whenever you've got your other battery that you want to install into the microfiber at hand, go ahead and Follow the instructions printed on the labeling to push it in the correct way around, so with the metal part near the back, and make sure it's pushed in all the way. Next, take the battery bay door and install it, making sure that the small pin is aligned with the line on the back, and both of those are in a horizontal orientation. 
there's only one correct orientation for it to go in, so if you're requiring any excess force to install it, that means you're doing something wrong. It should be quite a simple movement here, just rotating it 90 degrees clockwise. And that's it. Hopefully this tutorial has been useful, and if you have any other further questions, we would first recommend consulting our instruction manual, as it has a number of already answered questions, as well as troubleshooting steps in there. But if not, we are available and would be delighted to help you via our phone or email support. Thanks for watching.